Hello, that's me 10 years ago at the JDD conference, Java Developer Conference in Krakow. And what I did back, back then, I just um, wanted to show you how to write lightweight Java 6 and Java 6 applications. And um, so I proposed a session with the title Java The Future Is Now. Now, 10 years later, um, what, what, what happened is I was invited to the same conference. Um, and recently I was there and delivered a talk um, which uh, was related to the 10 years old talk. And what I plan to do is to migrate the old code and see how it works. The problem is um, we got um, a lot of interesting Java serverless topics and I got lots of questions from the attendees so I didn't manage to migrate the application. So I promised the attendees to do it uh, in a screencast. So let's do this. What I would like to do right now is to take the old application you can find here on YouTube. I just remember here, good morning Krakow at Stateless. You will see this in a second and migrate it to the newest um, application server. So actually it is very simple to migrate the old code because it was Java 6. I only would have to migrate it to J Jakarta E10 or migrate, use different dependency and just publish it to Payara from Glassfish and it would work. But um, I would like to be a little bit more or perform a little bit more challenging task is to migrate it to even Quarkus with a surprise at the end. Okay, so we have the uh, old code here. The, um, the project was called Universe. And I guess because the tagline of the conference is, is the um, Java Universe or something like this. So, and uh, what I would like to do is to open here the code. Visual Studio Code and uh, walk through the source code. So um, it starts with Comet Servlet. I guess I wanted to show that we have uh, async support in Servlet, so there can be asynchronous, which was new back then. Uh, what we also have is a Configurator. The motivation back then was to show that it's actually re relatively easy to implement Java E apps, which uh, are, can be uh, configured on the fly. And what happens here is I'm fetching the environment, which is test, this is just an enum, and depending on the environment and depending on the injection point, so where the configuration is injected, I'm uh, creating here on the fly uh, a new configuration and the intention back then was is to fetch it from, from system properties, environmentals or whatever. So this was like more sophisticated configuration. So we don't need it anymore because we have microprofile config. DB configurator is just, it specializes the configurator. So what happens here is it overrides the default configurator. And this is the environment which was injected here. And the environment is just an enum. And the um, environment is produced with a producer environment test. And this was the class we saw in the YouTube video. Good morning, Krakow, which is stateless with injected string. So this is the string configured by the configurator. And we also have here the thread starter. So what I don't like to migrate is the JSF, JSF part. It would work, but uh, we would need, um, I mean, JSF um, right now is less popular than 10 years ago. So I would rather promote it to a RESTful interface. So the, um, uh, add some additional functionality. So we have a job listener and uh, the motivation is hard to tell, but uh, what we see here, we have two kind of listeners. One listens to the CDI events of type string and uh, they are transactional. So there's after success and after failure. And the other one on window request listens to the servlet async context. And uh, what I wanted to simulate here is asynchronous processing, like a comet is long polling. So this was a long polling example. Um, which is interesting, 10 years ago, so there was lots of interest about lo long polling and, and server push. So, um, okay, and we have the thread starter and what this, um, my attempt was to show how easy it is to, uh, to perform uh, or to run tasks in a managed application server thread, which are monitored, managed, transactional, and come with the security context. This basically all, this is the POM, the POM is fairly simple. It looks like generated with NetBeans. Um, <clears throat> this is the Java 6 web API. To migrate it to the recent spec, you only will have to replace it with Jakarta E10 and it should work. Back then I used JDK 1.6, so I would uh, use a newer one. I never used actually the WAR plugin, I think. Yes, I use it for uh, the WAR deployment, of course. It was generated by NetBeans, so uh, um, 
but uh, web XML was optional even back then. So what it means is even 10 years ago, there was no, no XML. And the Maven dependency plugin was also generated by NetBeans and usually I never use it in, in, in stock projects. Okay. Now, uh, let's try to migrate this, and um, I have another project here in 2022, so it was the 2020, or 2012, 2012. Now let's take a look at the dates. As you can see, this is October 26, 2020, 12, 2012, and now we are in the year uh, 2022, and I created a 10 years after project um, with, uh, ignore the name for a second, but this is a regular Quarkus project. Um, so if I open that, air code. This is just regular Visual Studio code with just the Java plugin, nothing else. So um, this is a regular Quarkus project with, I think, exactly greeter and greeting resource. We don't need this, so I would like to delete that. And um, so now let's try to migrate this. Um, what I would like to do is... Um, I have to go out, this is Lambda, and uh, 10 years after, and even, I think, 2012, uh, exactly, and this was universe, and source main Java, I would like to copy everything to, to uh, source, to source main Java. Hopefully it works this way. Uh, and this is not CD copy. So I wanted to copy. And now we have it. So this is the new code. And uh, let's see. So uh, it seems like Quarkus does not understand servlets. So let's try to fix that. So what I will have to add is an extension called Undertow. So let's do this. The Undertow is the servlet engine and uh, Quarkus and go with uh, Quarkus and Undertow. So with that, should Quarkus should learn about servlets. Here it is. So Configurator, I would like to delete it and replace it with uh, MicroProfile Config. So let's delete this, then delete the DB Configurator. So what about the environment? I would say, you don't need it anymore because uh, Quarkus uh, supports profiles out of the box. So this is the percent dev prod or whatever. And if you would run without Quarkus on serverless environments like uh, Azure Functions or uh, or AWS Lambda or Fargate or Azure Container Instances, um, then usually you would pick the environment entries from the from the environment. And these uh, environments often support staging. So I, I would like to delete the environment and the environment provider. Okay, and this good morning Krakow is interesting. This is an EGB, which is no more available. So um, I would like to replace it with something similar to an EGB. And this is um, request scoped, which is a CDI scoped and transactional. So this is more or less um, behavior of an EGB and uh, remove the import. So this is done. Then index, this is JSF. I don't like to use the index because it's part of JSF. Then the job listener. So here we have it. There is actually nothing to do. It's just a regular, is a regular uh, Quarkus or Quarkus, a CDI, CDI event listener. And of two types. One is transactional string listener and the other one is async context. Okay, this is problematic. This is an asynchronous EJB, which is not available out of the box. I would say in Quarkus, but it's available in MicroProfile. So not EGB, but we have a replacement. So how to replace it? I would say instead in this particular case, because it's more or less like a thread pool, I would like to use I would application scoped. Request scope would also work, but application scope is also fine. And uh, the in asynchronous is available, but in different package. So and the, and the name of the package or the name of the API is called MicroProfile Fault Tolerance. So let's try this. Um, I would like to copy this. And of course, I could use the Quarkus extension, which is more convenient, but uh, this is the hardest possible way just to import everything from scratch. So just use the small RI, and we need the fault tolerance. 
And this makes available the async context. So now what I could do is I can just create here uh, instead of this, I have to remove the imports. I can say this is asynchronous from fault tolerance. The only thing is this fault tolerance has to return completion stage of type void. And this was the migration of asynchronous processing we get on. So this is even additional functionality here because with that, we get um, monitoring the so microprofile matrix for free if we would integrate that. I think we can try to build this. So um, let's try it. So I would like to switch to here and say Maven uh, just package and see what happens. And interestingly, we got an error and it looks like CDI injection error. So let's take a look. And uh, what's the problem? Unsatisfied dependencies for type string. So, um, and it tries to inject a string. So, and uh, the, the question is why it happens in build time. And this is the edit feature. So what, uh, is what, what Quarkus does differently to Glassfish back then, uh, Quarkus deploys at build time and Glassfish deployed at runtime. So we get uh, the uh, CDI and injection errors already at build time, which is better because I don't have to wait until the server uh, recognizes the deployment. Okay, so where is it? Good morning, Krakow. This is the problematic part. And now I would like to introduce microprofile config with config uh, property. This is the uh, property and with name and let's call it a uh, complex configuration and default value and the default value is uh, by let's call it by mp config so this is new and this is default value but it can be replaced why it is not imported now it is so um this is basically it so let's try this maven package and it looks good so um now let's try to launch it maven compile quarkus dev and this will start the application and the problem is we don't have an endpoint. I forgot to actually to do this. Uh, we could actually test the Comet servlet. This is what we could test, but there is no REST endpoint. So curl. So we will actually add additional functionality as well. So just go here, Comet servlet, and HTTP, localhost 8080, and then Comet servlet with servlet. Okay, this is already working, so we got the response from the servlet, which is remarkable. And uh, what I want to do is to add some JAXRES functionality, so path, and now I would like to call it JDD. JDD, and then here, just say get, should react to get. And what I also would like to do is to uh, to tell that this is actually a plain text uh, media type text plain, and this basically it. So um, okay, let's try this. So if I just try now with JDD. I get a response from, so the entire application is working as 10 years ago, so I can actually watch the video. So this was the entire migration to the recent possible runtime. Now the interesting part, why the name Lambda? And uh, there's a surprise. So um, what actually I plan to do is, so this already migrated, but what if we would like to migrate to our serverless environment and I also prepared something. Prepared is on my GitHub account. I'll show you this in a second. And um, what this is, it is a CDK deployment 
for the MicroProfile application. And this is going to be deployed as function URL stack. So I can even change the name to, let's say, JDD migration, JDD 10 years after, JDD 10 years after. And this is a Java app which deploys Quarkus as AWS Lambda. And what we get back is an ugly URL. So um, let's take a look at the ugly URL. So there is a build and deploy, don't ask. And this will build everything and deploy it as AWS Lambda. So there is one minor trick, um, which I show you in a second. In order to make it work, the Quarkus ships with one additional extension, Amazon Lambda HTTP. So this is what I added uh, before the screencast. And with this extension, the Quarkus creates function zip and deploys this as AWS Lambda. Of course, I could use Docker container or bare metal, but I think Lambda is the most impressive. Um, I don't even, I think 10 years ago there was no AWS Lambda, so uh, we migrated from Java 1.6 to Lambda. And of course, it is a simplistic application written in 45 minutes, but um, but uh, it is um, absolutely realistic because it comes with CDI events, asynchronous servlets, uh, configuration injection. So it is, I would say, it comes with um, functionality for, of, of a typical business application. So this can take one or two minutes. So to um, use the time, I would like to find my browser again. And this is actually the template I used. I just I just cloned that and started. So you can also try it at home. So this is AWS Quarkus Lambda CDK plane and it ships with the Lambda and CDK project. So this is what I used right now in the screencast. So what I did is I created this empty project before the screencast and just found the old code. Uh, copied it over and tried to deploy it. Okay, so let's see. Where is my... And Oh, or it already happened. So it was deployed in 70 seconds. And now we will experience the cold start. So let's see how bad it is. JDD, this is an extremely cold start because um, the entire network environment has to be booted. So um, this was the cold start. And this are this is the performance of an application running on our half a CPU, CPU, and 10 years old Java 6 application running on a half CPU in Frankfurt. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for uh, the JDD inv invitation. And um, now um, this was the missing part of my session. Thank you and see you next year. AirHex Live workshops um, or even YouTube shorts, which I try to create uh, daily. So lots of fun. Thank you and bye.